In this presentation, we will run month end reports after having entered one month worth of data into our practice problem. Get ready, because here we go with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're gonna be running some reports now. We're gonna run two of our basic reports, that being the financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement. We'll take a look at a trial balance report, and then we'll take a look at that transaction detail report, which is a really good report for reviewing our numbers here, as well as a report that if you're reviewing someone else's number, and or if you wanna basically bill on the amount of transactions, then that's another way you might uh, you might do so. So we're going to go to the reports drop down. We're going to be opening up. Let's start off with the financial statement reports. Let's open up our balance sheet and income statement. So I'm going to open these up uh, balance sheet first and then I'll open up the range and let's make this for the month of January. Then I'm going to say OK. And there is our balance sheet report. Now you can check your numbers to this numbers if you so choose. If there's going to be something that is off or if there is anything that is off then you can then change the dates. Try changing the dates to a future date point and see if uh, possibly it's a date range issue that, uh, that is the problem. We're also gonna be taking a look at the, at the uh, profit and loss and then the trial balance. The trial balance is a really good report to check your numbers to as well because it's a little bit easier to see the numbers without all the subtotals related to it. So I, w first thing you wanna do is check the dates. If anything is different, then zoom into it. And then you could check in and zoom uh, into it as well to see the transaction detail. And then, of course, we'll go to the transaction detail report, which will have each of the each of the detailed transactions. And you can take a look at the activity that we have done thus far. So we're going to be uh, printing this and exporting it to Excel. But we'll first open all the reports first, and then we'll come back into it and print these out. So the next one's going to be the income statement. So let's open up the income statement going to make that for the month of January too. So we're going to make that for the month of January. I'm going to uncheck these items so that we only we're not showing the zero balances and then say, OK, there's going to be our income statement. We have the current month and the year to date, which, of course, are the same at this point in time. Uh, we currently have the loss of the five thousand seven thirty seven ninety three. We're going to do the same. Now we're going to take a look at the trial balance. So trial balance. Let's go back on over and open our general ledger reports. We want to go to the working trial balance. I do recommend getting used to this working trial balance and using it often because it is one of those reports that's easier to check your numbers with. So if I if I then uncheck this and I'm going to go to the specific period and look at uh, the end of January. So we're going to say January 31st and there it is and then OK and run that report. So this one, if you want to check your numbers, this is probably the easiest report to do it. Same kind of method. Check your numbers. If there's something off, then date issue. Don't, you know, change the date to a future date in the future and then see what number is off and use your Zoom feature then to go in and see uh, which transactions might have a date issue. And then if anything, if you can't figure it out from that method, then of course, we'll go to the transaction detail report. So here's this item. Next report, transaction detail report. Let's open that up. Gonna open up the other report here. And that is gonna be the transaction detail report. It's in the general ledgers as well. Transaction detail, all transactions matching your search criteria. So I'm gonna say, okay, that's the one we want. Now I'll do this in two steps. If I go to the options up top and just change the dates, let's make it for the uh, January. So I'm gonna just do the January uh, information. I went the wrong way. <laughs> we want to be in January. And then this to the end of January. Now, if I, if I leave the defaults here, this is what the report looks like. I'm going to say OK. And there's our reports. So it, this is a pretty good format because it, it shows down here the, the payment type. This is the transaction type and it shows uh, the amount. So what it doesn't show, however, is the two accounts that are affected and it's not very helpful for the journal entries, therefore, because you can't see the two accounts that are involved. So if you want more detail in it, then you go to the options up top and we'll go back into them. And I want to say uh, include number. That's fine. I don't want to uncheck the summarize. I'm not going to summarize it. I want to see the detail and then we'll say OK. And now we've got the detail on the right hand side and that's pretty that's kind of nice over here. So it's kind of long, but it's kind of nice. So if I go to the right, then 
uh, we see the, the, the balances, and then we see the two accounts that are going to be affected. So the two accounts that are affected, and they give us the account number, so we'd have to look up the actual account, but we have at least the account number there. So then you could, you could take a look at these transactions. It might be easiest to look at um, the, the foreign transactions and match out these numbers. That's one uh, method you could use to just check your numbers. Also look that this is a, a great report if you're checking someone else's numbers to so wanna see how long something should take or the amount of transactions that are happening if you're reviewing work rather than just looking at the end product. It's also great again for billing if you wanted to bill, for example, by uh, transaction or even accounts that are affected. If you're dealing with complex transactions, there might be, you know, multiple accounts or something like that. And that's, you can give a range of transactions for your billing activity in that format. And then on, on this side, uh, note that you have the transaction type, which can help you, uh, you want to get used to the transaction types and then think about the type of accounts that can be affected over here by most of the transaction types, which will point to basically the forms uh, generally sales receipt, invoice, purchase, and so on and so forth. So those are our transactions. Let's go ahead and um, print this out now. We're gonna print out our reports. We're gonna do the same kind of thing we've seen in the past. We're gonna print them as a PDF using the Qt PDF printer. We'll also export them to Excel. Then we'll use Excel to collate them and print them on one PDF file as well. So the different methods we can use to present these reports to somebody. So let's start with the balance sheet and let me go back into the balance sheet. I'm going to use the Qt PDF printer to print to a PDF rather than the PDF file here because we want to practice using that Qt PDF printer. So let's go into the Qt PDF printer. I'm going to say, okay, and remember that uh, that printer is free, so you can uh, use that. It's a good tool. I would have some type of PDF printer available to you. And then I'm gonna say that we want this going into Sage Cowd Accounting. All right, and then I'm gonna right click and say New. And that's gonna be for Section 7, Section 7. So there we have that. And Section 7, Balance Sheet, that looks good. So I'll do that. And then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll print them all out this way and then I'll go to Excel. So I'm gonna go to the, to the uh, income statement, same thing here. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to print. I'm gonna go to the Qt PDF printer and just simply print it there as well. So we'll say okay. And it should go automatically there at this point. I think it's going to the right folder. It is, that's good. So I'll just go ahead and save that. So we'll save that one. And then we're gonna go back to our reports down below and go to the trial balance. Same thing for the trial balance. I'm gonna go ahead and print it out and then say, okay, it's going to the Qt PDF printer as well. And then open up that report or not open it, but we're gonna save it. There it is, the working trial balance. I'm gonna say, save that. And then I'll take a look at our transaction detail report. Transaction detail report, same thing. I'm gonna print it. It's going to be exported to the Qt PDF printer. I'm going to say OK. And then it'll uh, hopefully open that one. And that's good. OK, now let's export them to Excel. Put them all on Excel and see how we can collate that information and then use Excel to put them all on one PDF file. So we're going to go back to the balance sheet. I'm going to export it now to Excel. So I'm going to export it this time, creating a new uh, workbook. So a full new workbook, which will have, of course, the worksheet within it and the detail on that worksheet. There it is. Now let's go ahead and save this. Now I'm going to save this as basically the financial statement because then I want to put everything else onto this report. So I'm going to say save as. We're going to browse. And I'm going to save this to the, the section 7 folder. So we're going into section 7 and I'm going to call it... Uh, financial reports and then I'm gonna save it and now I'm gonna close this out I'm just gonna close it and then the other reports I'm gonna add to that item so I'm not gonna make another workbook I'm gonna go to the existing workbook and the following reports let's go to the income statement I'm gonna say send that to Excel this time I want to go to an existing workbook browse for that existing workbook so it's gonna say all right there's section six i'm going to go back to section seven is the one i want 
and then into the financial statements. So then I'll say okay and it'll open up that Excel file and it will add uh, the new worksheet to it. Hopefully, this is the plan. And that will include, of course, the income statement on it. So there it is. Uh, it's in the wrong window here. Let's pull it up so we can see it. So there it is. So now we have the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll think about formatting in a little bit here. So let's close this back out and then do the same thing for the rest of the reports. I'm gonna save it. You may want to save it before you close it if, if you're not, but we're living dangerously. So I let them remind me after I close it. And then I'm going to the working trial balance. Same thing. I'm going to say Excel, export it to Excel, existing workbook. It should be going to the right one this time since we just used it. So I'm going to say OK, and it should once again open that Excel uh, workbook and put the new worksheet on it, which means we'll have the three reports in there now. Let me pull it up to the window we're working with again. Pull it on up. Pull it on up. And then we'll take a look. I'll take a look at uh, formatting it later. We could get rid of some of these rows. But now we got the balance sheet. We got the income statement. We got the working trial balance. All right. So let's close this back out and let's do this one more time. I'm going to save that one. And this time we're going to be opening up the, the uh, what's the last report here. We got the transaction detail report. This is going to be a long one. We're going to have to format in Excel a bit, but it's going to the existing workbook. That's what we want. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say, OK, please export that one. And it should export the report and then make a new tab with it, with all of that information in it. So there we have it. So now if I if I go back on over, we got all of our reports. Now we can do some formatting for them. So the balance sheet, if I go to the balance sheet, it looks pretty good. If I go to the uh, the page layout tab, I can see the title. There's the title. Everything fits on one page wide. I'm not too concerned that it takes more pages long. So I'm okay with that. Let's then go to the income statement. Once again, it looks pretty good. If We probably don't need the month end and the year end. So maybe I just want to remove the year end. Maybe I'm going to put my cursor on column D and just highlight across and then right click and delete so i could delete that you know easily adjust it if i want to in here i could remove uh these numbers if i if i don't want those included as well but i'll keep them at this time then i'll take a look at the working trial balance now this one if i go to the page layout tab and back on over there it is that looks good uh, it fits on a page but i don't really need these columns here so i could say i'm just going to put my cursor on column e to column I, right click on that selected area and just delete that. And I don't really need this column, so I'm gonna put my cursor on column C, right click and delete that. And then you could do some formatting over here if you want the negative numbers to stand out a little bit more. You might say, hey, how about maybe just these columns? Why don't I make that if I if I format that, right click and format them. Maybe I want the, the bracketed numbers or the negatives to be bracketed or maybe even negative, and I'm <laughs> maybe even red and bracketed. Let's do that. And so I'm gonna say, okay. So that might make it stand out a little bit more. And you can, you can see that format. If you're used to having the trial balance with two columns, you could even format it that way. You can say, hey, look, these numbers right here, I'm gonna select those and I'm just gonna pull them over on over here. And then I'd like to sum up this column and sum up this column like so and then widen this column out <clears throat> and then we can have the debit debit and cred oh that's not what i want to do i'm going to undo that <laughs> and then the credit and we can match that out and we could uh, say I want, uh, you know, like this formatting down here and do something like that. I can get rid of the double underline or I can get rid of the double underline by saying, let's just take the formatting of this one and put it over here. So something like that. <clears throat> so there we have our debits and credits in any case. We go to the next tab and we can say, okay, this one needs some formatting probably. If I go to the page layouts tab and back on over, it doesn't fit on one page wide. 
So I could say, okay, I would like this to fit on uh, on one page wide. What could uh, what could we do here? So we could say, let's go to the page layout, make sure it's landscape. So I'm going to go to the orientation. It looks like it is landscape. So that looks good. So then we have the reference number. We have the ID, the name. We may need all of those items. So then what you might do is select the entire thing and then double like put your cursor in the middle double click on it and that'll maximize all the columns it'll make them as small as possible so that you still have uh the, the column there now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say maybe i'm going to hide let, let's hide one of these let's see i'm not sure i don't think i need the line description because i have the transaction type but i don't want to delete it so maybe i select it and then right click and hide it and say i'm going to print it without it and, if, and then if i need it later i can bring that back and that brings me into one page so that looks good. Now let's go ahead and print this. I'm going to go to the file tab on the right. I'm going to print it. I'm going to use the Qt PDF printer to, to print it out. But if, if we wanted to print the entire thing now, it'll be collated for us. So in other words, if I selected the entire workbook, I can print now the entire workbook, seven pages, and it'll be collated. If I print it to the Qt PDF printer, it'll print to a PDF file, be collated. There's our income statement. Uh, our balance sheet started. Where's where we started? And then our income statement. So there's our income statement. Here's the working trial balance. And then the transaction detailed report. Transaction detailed report. And that looks good. It all fits on, on a one page wide. So let's go ahead and print that. Now I'm going to print that out. We're going to be printing it to the Qt PDF printer. So the Qt PDF printer will be opening up a, a file for it. There it is. Financial reports. Let's say OK there. So we have, we have that saved. So now I'm going to close this back out and we'll save this and I'm going to minimize this, minimize that, minimize this, minimize that, minimize, well, let's just close this, minimize this, uh, let's close that. I don't know what that's doing there anymore. And then I'm going to open up the Sage 50. This is where we put the stuff and then it's going to open up into the wrong screen, but I'll totally just pull it up into the screen that we are currently working on. So here we go. And now we're going to be in section seven. And then we can, we can once again provide this to somebody else in a couple different ways. I might say that uh, I want to put all the reports into a folder and zip the folder. For example, financial, re financial reports. And then I can put everything in there, such as the balance sheet goes in there, and then the income statement, I could put that in there, and then the transaction detail, and then the working trial balance. And then I could zip that by right-clicking and sending it to you know a compressed file. So we could compress it in that format. Or we can print everything from the from obviously the Excel file, or we can have everything in one document that being the pdf document so if we open then up the pdf document that should have all the reports in it balance sheet report income statement trial balance and so on we can use that for the for the one attachment so those are a few ways that we can consolidate this information remember that if you're doing the, the accounting and providing it to somebody like a client at the end of the period the the presentation is half the half of what is necessary oftentimes so uh, you want to think about it. what's the best way to get this information to whoever you need to get it to in. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.